previously in the dungeon of the Mad Mage. The party found themselves resting in the lost level of the Malerkin, now home to the Skulltaker tribe. During their rest, Bones discovered that the heart of the mountain had grown in power, expanding its capabilities in response to Bones' own growth. The heart of the mountain now recognized Bones as capable enough to appoint a steward, allowing the power of the heart of the mountain to be accessed even without his presence, though in a somewhat limited quantity. Still, it was progress. Bones then spent time deconstructing the Queen of Bones skull, while Ashes actually spent time with the goblin farmer, Thresher, who had approached the Blood Hunter about wanting to learn some basic alchemy. Atashtai worked on his painting, Ezra worked on his research, and a small celebration was had as the Skull Takers accepted the many gifts the party bestowed upon them. On the morrow, the group headed out, intent on making their way to the magic academy they had repeatedly heard about, Dwemer Corps. Their journey through the land of the Stone Men was swift, but fraught with peril, as the stone giants still harried them at every turn. Conversely, their travels through the Slither Swamp were quiet and uneventful. After traveling till about mid-morning down long, silent tunnels, the party saw a light ahead. Heeding the warning and instruction they had been given by the necromancer Karstus, they shouted out, Manshoon lost. There was no response. Hesitantly, the party moved forward to discover the tunnel led into civilized chambers, a foyer guarded by a floating severed arm. The arm did not seem to respond to the party's presence, and after a few moments, the party decided to explore. But that exploration was cut short as through one of the several doors arrived Alistair Blackcloak himself. The Mad Mage greeted them excitedly, seemingly quite glad of Ezra's arrival. It took scant moments for the headmaster of the academy to usher the party forward, leading them on a tour. They headed south from the academy entrance, passing a fresco of eight staves and a Medusa statue. Alistair then introduced them to another academy student, a young boy named Spite Harodel, and his companion Damara. There was a short, somewhat sniping exchange between Spite and Alistair before the group continued onward with the tour. Further south, the party spied on another ac academy student, an illithid named Cephalosk. After this, Halister led the party into the dorm Decentia, where Ezra was assigned a room. After this assignment, Halister appeared to receive some sort of information, because he told the party new visitors had arrived, and that the tour would have to be truncated, if only for now. They continued past a garbage dump and a room that was empty, aside from a giant red curtain. And then Halister began to excitedly jog southeast, and the party witnessed the end of a sorceress duel as a tiefling woman named Turbulence was soundly beaten by and surrendered to three animated statues, one of which seemed to be a teacher named Marambra. Turbulence complained to the headmaster that Marambra's teaching was insufficient. Alistair had seemingly no help to provide at that moment and so turned north down a long hall. The tiefling followed and the party encountered a fourth student of the academy, Nihilus, a bald, sickly-looking young man in red robes. He appeared to be lying in wait and under the headmaster's watchful eyes, Turbulence immediately rushed to drink from a nearby cauldron, which healed her wounds and mended her ruined clothes. Nihilus rather unconvincingly feigned illness before the headmaster revealed his two pets, Will-O-Wisps, life-draining creatures. Halister suggested that both students go their separate ways, and then led the party further north. 
After discovering a false wall, the party was led to a circular chamber where another tiefling awaited, seemingly serving detention of a sort. This student, Violence, received only the briefest introduction before the headmaster was interrupted by music. Harps suddenly beginning to play all around the party. Out from the northeast door that was marked as the headmaster's office came two figures. The first was a pale blue-skinned woman covered in bleached spurs of bone, wearing a cream and gold dress, a conical hat, and drifting lazily through the air on gossamer dragonfly wings. Arcturia. The second was a bluish metal hulk traced with crackling electricity and bearing the very visage of death. Trobriand. The party had been brought face to face with two of the seven. The following exchange was odd, to say the least. Arcturia and Trobriand informed Halaster of another being, Muriel, and the creature's movements, a potential threat that they felt needed to be protected against. Arcturia's demeanor toward the headmaster was dismissive, and as Halaster attempted to usher the two archmages into his office, the capricious fey-like creature flitted past him, intent on the party. More specifically, intent on Ezra. She seemed to focus in on the sorcerer, pushing as to whether or not he was truly a student. But her assessment of the vitiligo-covered half-elf was interrupted mysteriously. And after a moment, Alistair moved the two legendary mages into his office. Before leaving, the headmaster turned the party over to the tiefling violence requesting that she take the group to the canteen and a fellow student named Elon. Hey everybody, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, consider leaving a like, commenting, or subscribing. It really helps me out. If you'd like to see me live, head over to my Twitch at twitch.tv forward slash the distant horizon.